All right, guys. So we got script training today, Wednesday, August 31st. What is up? Hope you guys are having a great day. We're gonna kick it off, guys. Today I want to do a script battle. Just gonna, it's gonna be the hot seat. Just gonna throw out some random uh objections, and everyone is gonna get a turn today to participate. So if you are on the training, you will be participating. Just FYI, this is the place where we learn where we make mistakes, where we grow, where we get critiqued, stuff like that. This is the practice arena right here, right? You don't want to be practicing on your clients. So practice here. This way, if you do need some uh, some tweaking, some criticism, you get what you need. And then when you go out there and talk to clients, you are prepared and ready to go. So let's build out the framework, guys. Um, for any objection, we're always looking for there's a couple strategies, right? Is, is number one, we got to acknowledge. So repeat and approve. Who remembers the repeat and approve? All right. So if someone says, yeah, I'm just not sure if I want to buy right now. I don't know if it's, if it's a good time to buy, right? That's a good, that's a common objection. Instead of you just saying, well, I think you should buy because of this. You need to first stop and acknowledge what they just said. So you need to repeat and approve. Um, so, hey, Mr. Customer, so you don't, you're not sure if it's a good time to buy. I hear you. So I just repeated it back to them. And then I'm acknowledging them by approving it. I hear you. I understand that's a valid concern. And then you go on to trying to uh, walk them through the objection uh, by asking questions or, or, you know, posing the scenario. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, are you doing repeat and approve? Are you cool, calm and collect? And then are you able to answer the objection um, appropriately and get them to the next step, right? So we're not going down the rabbit hole of like booking the appointment. It's just simply just the objection part of it. So we'll do a quick little sample um, real quick of what I'm looking for. And then we'll turn it over to you guys for the hot seat. Um, who wants to be the client real quick? Maori. So you're the client, bro. I'm going to do it. This is a little sample for you guys of, of what we're doing. So Madi, just throw an objection at me. What's the most common objection you're getting right now? Hey, Enrique. Thanks for following up. Um, still taking a break right now. Uh, I think uh, we're just going to wait for the holidays to be over. Uh, market's still kind of, I mean, interest rates shot up crazy. So I think we're going to wait, see if it cools down a little bit, and probably just get back into it uh, next year. Got it. Got it. So, so you want to take a break right now because of the holidays and then you're concerned about the market um, and you want to see if maybe it cools down uh, after the holidays and then maybe resume your search then. Um, yes. Got it. I totally hear you. I totally hear you. That's, that's a valid concern. That's a valid option. I totally hear what you're saying. Um, let me ask you this. Is there anything you think that would be different after the holidays or what do you, you know, why do you think waiting would be in your favor? Um, well, I mean, not, we're going to start doing a lot of traveling, right? So I don't even know how many weekends I'll be available to look at homes. And I, I just don't want to waste your time. So I think, you know, we're going to take a break for now, do our traveling, do our whole holiday stuff. And then once uh, the kids are back to school after that, the holiday break, then I think uh, we'd have more room to breathe and, you know, shop around with too, without too much stuff on our minds. Got it. Got it. So you're going to be doing some traveling. You're not going to sure if you're going to be, you're not sure if you're going to be available. Uh, and, I think you froze. Uh, try that again. So you're going to be doing some traveling. You're not sure if you're going to be available to go see homes and you rather wait until you're a little bit more available. Yes. Got it. I totally understand that. Absolutely makes sense. Let me ask you this. Um, I know you got some things coming up, but if it were more advantageous for you to buy sooner, like you can, if you can get a better deal now where you could potentially save a lot more money on your purchase, you know, because of the opportunities in the market, would that be a, a reason to maybe start looking sooner than later? Like if you can get a better deal now than after the holidays, would, would that be a, a good enough reason for you to maybe start looking sooner? Yeah, I would. Okay, great. Um, so let me go ahead and show you some of the data and show you where I think some of the opportunities are and then we'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there. So I want you guys just to kind of carry the conversation that far, right? Answer the objection, walk them through it and then pose some sort of question to them to understand why and maybe pose like a scenario. Like if we were able to do this or if 
A, then B, um, something like that, right? So now I'm gonna flip it over to someone else. Who wants to, everyone's gonna get a chance to go today. So who wants to go first? Should we do a popcorn? <laughs> popcorn. Popcorn over to someone. I'm just gonna go ABC order. I can go, I can go. All right, <laughs> let's go Thomas. Uh, so Thomas, I'm gonna throw an objection at you. Um, Thomas, you know, uh, thanks for following up with me. I appreciate it. Uh, I actually have an agent right now that I just started working with and kind of want to see how it goes with them first. So Enrique, thank you for sharing with me that you have an agent right now. I really appreciate you being upfront and some of the benefits that we bring to our buyers is finding homes off market or have coming soon listings. Is that something that your agent has been showing you as well? Um, no, not really. I mean, he kind of set us up on a home search. And um, so we've been getting some like emails from him, like from the MLS. And then we're kind of just telling him, you know, which properties we like and want to go see. Fantastic. And this agent is they are they a friend of yours or were they referred to you how did you find this agent um i just uh someone we we went to an open house and they were there and, and we kind of connected with them and just kind of been talking to them fantastic thank you for sharing that enrique you know i always tell my buyers if you don't know an agent in the bay area you probably don't have too many friends there's so many agents out here <laughs> and at the end of the day it's my job to really help my buyers get the best value in the market. Part of that is with off-market and on-market homes and all our other resources. If we were able to do better for you than your current agent, would you be interested in working together? Um, I mean, uh, I'd be willing to kind of see what you guys have to offer, what makes you any different, but, you know, I, I don't want to commit to anything because, you know, I just kind of barely got to know you. I appreciate that. And I'm the same exact way. I wouldn't commit to someone like that either. But just to give you some idea, this past month, we've been working with about five or six buyers. And, you know, we've gotten them in at pretty good values. And not only that, the appraisals have also come in higher instant equity. And I would love you to show you some strategies of how we're doing that. It's no commitment. It'll probably take about 30 minutes on Zoom. Is that something you might be open to? Yeah, yeah, I'd be willing to hear kind of what your guys' strategies are. I mean, the more information I have, you know, I think the better. Perfect. So on this 30-minute call, we're going to be going over the current market condition, why it could make sense or not make sense to buy, depending on your situation. And uh, we'll also have my lender on the call. That way you can ask any loan questions as well. Would Wednesday or Thursday be better? Uh, Thursday's fine. Okay. All right. Stop right there. Good job. Let's give it up for Thomas. Solid, solid, solid. Um, uh, Thomas, I want to give you some feedback. Um, what I loved about your, your response was you didn't flinch at all, right? Like you were cool, calm and collect. You thanked me for being open with you. Um, you didn't, you know, bash the other agent, which I think was important. You just more asked questions like, hey, is your current agent, you know, showing you any of these options? Right. Or if we can, if this, if we can get you a better deal or deliver more value, would you be open, you know, to working with us? Um, so I like how you really just handled that smoothly and it didn't feel like a, like a sales, you know, like you were just trying to sell me. It really felt like you were just getting me to think, right. Like getting me the second guess, which is, you know, why I ended up saying, all right, well, I'm willing to hear you out, you know, and, and go from there. Um, and I think it's important guys, anytime you have a client that has, is working with another agent, you got to be very, very tactful to not come across as someone bashing the other agent, because when you bash another agent, that doesn't make you look good at all. You want to more speak in terms of this is what I do, right? Not like, are they doing that? Or, you know, they're not a good agent. You just want to say like, Hey, this is how I run my operation. Is that valuable to you? Right. If we're able to do this for you, would you see some value in that? um but good stuff any any uh guys any questions or any feedback for uh for thomas on that regarding that objection
All right, let's go. Hot seat, hot seat. Who's next? I'm gonna call someone out. Let's go, uh, Mike. I'm actually uh, doing some work right now, but I was just gonna listen in on. <laughs> What's up? Hey, if you're on this call today, that means you're here to participate. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, pay, pay participate always. Yeah. All uh, right, let's go. <laughs> let's get it. So I'm gonna throw an objection at you, and I just want you to handle it. Um, you know. Take some some pointers off what Thomas just did. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking for repeating and approving, right? So if I throw an objection at you, I want you to acknowledge the objection, repeat it back to me. Let me know you hear me, acknowledge it, right? And then I want you to go into a series of questions that would, you know, possibly lead me to wanting to continue to talk to you, right? Okay. Um, so Mike, uh, yeah, everything you do, you're saying sounds good. Uh, thanks for following up. Um, but I, I got to talk to my wife, man, you know, before we, I commit to, you know, meeting with you or anything like that. Um, uh, I got to check in with the wife and, you know, see how she feels about that. Okay. Sounds good. So you want to check with your wife regarding the purchase of the home. So is it typically when you need your wife there to make the decision together? Yeah. Yeah. You know how that goes, man. Happy wife, happy life. And yeah, <laughs> I totally get it. Uh, be, being a, a big decision like this is a very important asset. One of your biggest purchases in your life. I totally get to have your wife and you there. So let's make this happen. So when is a good time for you and your wife to be there? Uh, would tomorrow or Wednesday be better for you? And then to schedule to talk about the home? Um, I don't know. I need to check with her first before I commit to anything. Because I don't want to, you know, say yes. And then if she, you know, changes her mind or. Yeah, whatever. totally get it. Totally get it. We want to make sure that she's, she's available as well. So let's just do this. Let's schedule for Wednesday at four o'clock. Uh, tentatively, and I'll check with you later tonight to see if we can keep that time frame. Would that work for you? Um, yeah, I guess that I have to check with her, but I can't promise anything. You know, I, I need to check with her first, and um, and then I can get back to you. Okay, absolutely. Let's, let's schedule for four o'clock uh, tomorrow, and I'll give you a call later tonight to confirm. Okay, sounds good. Okay, bam. Let's stop right there. That was short and sweet and simple, right? So you're going to get that a lot, right? You're going to get people saying like, hey, I got to check with my spouse. I got to check with my wife or whatever. Um, and when Mike, he totally acknowledged that, right? I totally understand. You know, she wants to be part of the decision-making process. Is she typically, does she typically have to be there? Uh, that, was, that was definitely a good way to acknowledge. One of the secrets, guys, when, when you have someone that wants to check with their wife is just roll with it, right? Like agree with them. Oh yeah, I totally understand. I want to make sure your wife's on board before we meet. Um, like don't pose any sort of objection to that. But then what he did was smart. He's like, why don't we just book something for four tomorrow? And then I'll call you back later to confirm. Go ahead and check with your wife and see if that works. And then I'll just get back to you to confirm. So what he did is he inched me forward just a little bit more, but he still left it like I could still go check with my wife, right? Rather than, rather than saying, all right, go ahead and check with your wife and then I'll call you back and we'll set something up, right? Always, 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 when they got to check with their spouse, book a tentative appointment. So you can do things such as like, hey, well, when is your wife typically available? You know, mornings or afternoons? Let's assume you talk to her and she says everything's fine. Do afternoons normally work better for you guys after work or, or morning time? And then I'd say, yeah, afternoons are typically when we're available. Okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we just set a tentative appointment, you know, for 5 p.m. And then go ahead and check with her. And then I'll call you back tomorrow. Or I'll call you back later today. And you just let me know if we're good to go. All right. Has anybody run into that? Anybody run into that scenario where they want to check with their spouse first before committing to an appointment? Any feedback? I also guys? like to say, I yeah. also like to say, that a let's tentatively set a time, no commitment. I also usually have kind of like a joke to each objection. So that one would be, hey, I want to make sure you still have a wife as well. So, you know, let's not make any rash decisions. Let's set it tentatively, no commitment. Yeah. Yeah, the joke, right? Like just breaking the ice, right? Breaking the ice and not acting like it's, it's a big deal. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, so far we're on a roll. We're at like two out of two. 
Uh, let's go. Who's next? Who wants to go? Raise your hand. Thomas Roscoe, you want to go? Sure. All right, let's do this. Who wants to be the buyer, uh, the client? Someone else role play with him. Okay, oh. Alessandra, you're the client. So I want you to throw an objection at Thomas. What's a common objection you've, you've heard or what's an objection you, you get? And I want you to throw it at him and he has walked through it. Okay. Oh, I said, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, we want to buy, but our lease ends in February. So that's when we're going to think we're thinking about, um, moving forward. So you're, you're planning on buying, but you said you, you have a lease until February so yeah. that you don't want to break your lease beforehand. Mm, if we find the perfect home, then we're open to it. So if you find the perfect home, you may be interested in breaking the lease. Okay, um, you know, right now is a good opportunity with interest rates being lower and homes are actually lowering their prices right now. We don't know in spring, especially that's when the market gets really hot again and really competitive, that we may be able to take uh, advantage of this opportunity right now, which is leaning towards more of a normal, even slightly going towards a buyer's market, which is the, the ball is in your hands right now. Sellers are even offering credits, we can get you cheaper loans with the credits from the sellers. So do you think that's something you might be interested in to move forward? You know, if you see something that's a great deal, you can move forward with that. So you, if we find a home, you think you can get me, uh, you're gonna get me credits? We would definitely try to get you credits. Uh, a lot of sellers are offering some right now. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. And we're pretty good at asking about trying to get those for you. Let's see. Yeah, we were thinking that maybe by the end of the year, the interest rates are also going to go down. Yeah, uh, a lot of people, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but right now the Fed's just raised the rates again. And so it's going to be planning to go up, actually. And, uh, you know, the one the rates just fell about half percent. And that was quite surprising. So that is something quite good to take advantage of. I see. Okay, let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. What sort of feedback can you guys give uh, Thomas? Anybody have some feedback for him? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll just say something that I did, that I did catch Thomas. Um, typically when someone brings up a question like that, where they're like, um, what'd you say? Like, oh yeah, can you, can you get me credits or things okay. like that? I usually just say, hey, that's a really good question, Alessandra. Um, which is exactly where we need to jump on a quick Zoom call. And I could tell you all about what's going on in the market. Um, and then you can decide if it's a good decision for you to move forward. Um, I typically don't mention anything like we'll get you credits or interest rates are down. I don't talk about anything like that over the phone. Um, I, I learned that just, you know, style the appointment and then whatever they ask, say, yeah, that's a really great question. That's what we're exactly we're going to talk about when we do when we have our conversation via Zoom. Uh, when are you available? Weekends or weekdays? Weekdays at four p.m. works for you. Yep, sounds good. I'll see you then. Awesome. So yeah, that, that's what I do. Um, that makes it short and uh, sweet. Uh, get to the actual appointment. And sometimes, I mean, when I was learning, when I was starting off, like I would talk about things like that, and I'll just shoot myself in the foot. Because either you give up too much information and they don't need you anymore, therefore they are not going to do the consultation, or you just you just kind of go into this deep rabbit hole of having a long conversation over the phone, um, and that just wastes so much time. All right, right. my experience ish. I don't know if anybody else has more to add. What do you got, see? Um, hi, Thomas. Um, so I think you had a lot of really good information and you can tell like you have some knowledge, which is awesome. But I would just caution you um, to not open up so many things that like you, you almost opened up like a can of worms with areas that you started like touching on that weren't so relevant to her original um, rebuttal, which was like, oh, she has a lease. And then she even said like, 
almost right after that, that she was open to it. So I would have just even stopped right then and there because you didn't need to go into the interest rates and the credits and all this because you could have got into a really sticky situation. I would have just closed for the appointment anyways, just right then and there and just kept it super simple. And then talk about all that other stuff. And then also, um, I agree with Maddie, like over promising anything like credits and stuff like that. You set the expectations so high in the beginning that if you don't get them that stuff, then they may be disappointed in the future. Whereas maybe if you didn't talk about that and then you got it for them, then they'd be like really happy. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Um, I think you you handled the call like cool, calm, and collect. But like I would agree with the Zahara is is don't veer off into another path that we you know that we don't have to veer off into. Less is um, more. Yeah, less is more in that case, right? Because if she's saying like, hey, I, you know, I have a lease, so I want to wait till then, but I'm maybe willing to, to find something if, uh, if it's a good deal, then just stick with that. Right? Like, hey, great. Totally understand. Like you have a lease, but if it makes sense, you, you might be willing to move forward. So why don't we do this? Why don't we just jump on a call? And why don't we kind of walk through all the details of like your lease and how much it's going to be? And also what some of the opportunities are in the market. And let's see if it even makes sense for you to buy sooner than later. Right. And then instead of like throwing credits and rates and all that stuff, which you're adding more, like more to the equation that didn't have to be added. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's just this is this structure was really good. I don't know if he has any sales experience, but the structure was really good. Yeah. Definitely the structure. I have a uh, chef experience. <laughs> yeah yeah other than that like i think you handled it really solid like it was cool calm collect it's just um like you said less is more right you hit it right on the nose just keep it to that initial objection because yeah, so she she was open to moving forward so i should have just just book, try to book a zoom or a consultation and then uh move on to the next call exactly exactly and then in the consultation, that's when you might go into more details and figure out exactly what they need and if you need to touch on any of those areas, right? In the consultation. Yeah. For the sake of these, um, for the sake of this role play, we're strictly going for booking the appointment, right? Just book the appointment. Um, all right, let's go. Who's next? Who is next? I'm going to call on Brenda. You ready, Brenda? Yeah. All right. Who wants to role play with Brenda? Who wants to be the client and throw an objection at her? <sighs> Iris. All right. Okay. Throw an objection at Brenda. Uh, hey, Brenda. Um, you know, I'm not sure if uh, this is a good time for me to buy right now because uh, my credit isn't good enough. Okay. Hey, Iris. So um, what I'm hearing is that you want to find out more information regarding your credit. Is yeah. that right? Okay, um, well, what I think we should do or what I suggest we do is hop on a phone call with one of our in-house financial lenders and we can go over the details of what you would be able to qualify for in the today's market. How does that sound? Um, yeah, that sounds good. But, you know, like um, make, it's not just the, the credit, but I'd also have um, concern about the markets right now. I do see interest rates go up a little bit. Yeah. And that kind of like, you know, a pushback for me. Okay. Um, yeah, I totally see what you're saying that you're worried that the interest rates are going to go up. Um, but what we have seen is that the interest rates have mellowed out into the fours. And that might be an advantage to you to buy now and you can refinance later if you have any concerns about that. Um, how does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, great. Um, how's tomorrow at 4 p.m.? Um, tomorrow, 4 p.m. work. Okay, great. I'll see you then, Iris. Okay, stop right there. Good job. Let's give it up, ladies. Good job. So let me give you some key advice, Brenda, because I think you did a lot of things really well. Um, you sounded really you know, cool, confident, and stuff like that. Um, I know you're on the spot right now and, you know, everyone's watching you. So that may play a role, but like if, if it was strictly the phone, like no one can tell if you were shy or nervous, the only tweak that I would make, and this is something that maybe you naturally do is don't ask them, how does that sound? Right. 
because it's almost like you are waiting for them to approve what you just said. So you have to assume, there's something called assume the close, assume that what you just said answered their concern and objection and go back to, why don't we go ahead and book the consultation? So you need to take control of it and you need to push them to, let's go ahead and book that console and we'll go over all that information once we meet. Instead of like, because you said some really good stuff. You said, hey, you're concerned about the rates. You know, that's why I think we should meet and I'll get the lender and we'll go over the different programs and see, you know, what you qualify for. But then you kind of just said like, how does that sound? And then you left it like in her ball. You give the ball back to her, right? You took the ball and then you just gave it back to her and like didn't like shoot it in the hoop, if that makes sense, right? Versus, hey, that's exactly why we need to meet. When we get on the call, I'm going to have my lender there. We'll go over all the programs. We'll look at your credit. We'll see exactly what you qualify for. And we'll see if it makes sense for you to buy. So let's go ahead and now, instead of saying, how does that sound? Say, so let's go ahead and book that consult. And, you know, it'll be a quick, uh, informative uh, meeting. Does mornings or afternoons typically work for you? Right? Okay, how about Thursday at two o'clock? Boom, now you got an appointment. Because if you hesitate, right? If you say like, how does that sound? And now you've kind of hesitated, then it completely invalidates like the confidence that you gave prior to that, right? So don't hesitate, just go straight for the appointment right after you answered her objection. Does that make sense? Okay, so for the sake of this, cause I want you to learn from this, I want, let's try that one more time, right? So Iris, you're gonna throw the same objections at her, same objections. And Brenda, now instead of how does that sound, you're gonna answer it, you're gonna approve it, acknowledge it, approve it, answer the objection, and then you're gonna go for the appointment. Okay. Um, hey, hey, Brenda, uh, thank you for checking in. You know, uh, right now, I don't know if this is the good time for me because uh, my credit isn't good enough yet. Uh, hey, Iris, um, thank you for joining me. I understand your concern that you want to make sure that your credit is up to par. And um, what I suggest we do is get on the phone call with our financial lender so that we can go over uh, your financial details, make sure that um, you can qualify for some type of program. And um, why don't we go hop on a Zoom call for tomorrow at 4 p.m.? Yes, that sounds good. Okay, great. I'll see you at four. Boom. All right. There you go. Right. So a lot different than like, all right, how does that sound? Right. You went for mm -hmm. like, why don't we go ahead? Because that was the difference maker right there. Like you had to close the loop, right. By just booking the, the console. Okay. Um, the other thing too, that I would mention is let them know like let them know, hey, when we meet with the with the lender, we'll go over everything and then we'll see if it makes sense for mm -hmm. you to buy right now. We'll answer all the questions. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at your credit. We'll see what you qualify for and let's see if it even makes sense or what options you have right now, right? Because then you're kind of saying like, hey, well, at least meet with me because then you'll, you're gonna learn something and you're gonna see what your options are, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing I would I would probably add. So let's give it up, guys. Give it up for Brenda and Iris. Good job. All right, let's go. Who's next? Who wants to go? Who wants to be in the hot seat? I'm gonna call on Manny. In the hot seat, brother. Who wants to uh who wants to throw an objection at Manny? Who wants to be the, the client? Diana. All right, let's go. So Manny, you followed up with Diana. You checked in on her. She's an old lead, and Diana's gonna throw an objection. We want to see, we want to hear you acknowledge the objection, approve it, and then I want to see you handle the objection and, and go for the appointment. Um, Diana, what you got? Um, Diana raised her hand, but can't hear her. Uh, Connie, I think you raised your hand. Connie, you want, want to go and try? Yeah. Um, you know, I'd really like to buy a house right now, but honestly, I have a lot of debt, but I make some great money. 
Thank you, Connie. Thank you for uh, your honesty. Um, so you're, what you're saying is that you're not sure about your debt today. Is that correct? Um, you know, I have a good idea as to how much I owe, but, you know, some things happened in the past, you know, going through a divorce. Um, so, you know, I'm not really sure where my credit stands and my debt, but I make really good money. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, you know, what I would suggest is that we sit with a, one of my loan people, be able to evaluate your, your debt, your credit, and see if we can prepare you for a purchase. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little nervous to meet with a lender just because, you know, I don't want it to impact my credit even further than than where it is right now. Okay. Yeah, there's only a couple of ways we can do this. So there's actually one way we can do this. And let me ask you this. If if in if I can get you a house in the next 30 days, would you be open to sitting down and speaking to one of my loan people? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if we could find the home that really suits my needs. Yeah, absolutely. So the first step is really to take evaluating your um, your finances, correct? Wouldn't you yeah. agree? Mm -hmm. So why don't we do this? Why don't we set up a time either tomorrow or Friday and uh, see if we can make some time to meet with you. Um, would morning or afternoon work for you best? Um, let's uh you know my my schedule's pretty busy why don't i get back to you about that okay um so all right i'm stuck <laughs> um let's see um you have any other days that are available to you uh you know i would need to check my calendar let me get back to you about that okay um so can i check in with you tomorrow and see if we can pin down a time yeah Perfect. What time would be best? Uh, you can call me around the same time and try and catch me. Okay, sounds good. I'll re look out for my call. Uh, I'll call you back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Okay. Thank you much. All right. Let's stop right okay. there. Stop right there. Cool. All right, give it up. Give it up for Manny <laughs> and Tony. I know you're on the spot, brother. Yeah. But you got to put yourself out there, man. That's how you're going to get better. So, um, Here's, here's the thing. Here's, here's some advice I would give you. Here's what I like is I like that you just kept pushing. You kept pushing through it, right? Like she threw you an objection and you answered it. And then you just went like, so let's book the appointment. Hey, good mornings or afternoon. So you didn't give up, right? Even though you got a little stuck on that last one, you didn't give up. And Connie kind of threw like a couple different ones at you. So she wasn't, it wasn't a lay down. And that's usually how the, a lot of the clients are, right? They throw one and then they throw another and then you answered one. And then now they go, oh, well, let me check my schedule. So I think um, just one of the things is, is acknowledging, right, her concern and it, maybe being just a little softer and acknowledging the concern. Like, hey, Connie, I totally hear you. You know, it sounds like you're concerned with the finances. I totally hear you. You know, that, that's, it's obviously, you know, a big decision, you know, and one of the tactics that I use with, is that's exactly why we should meet, right? That's exactly <laughs> why we should meet. Because when we meet, I'll be able to get my lender and we'll be able to walk through all of these different concerns that you have. And we'll be able to let you know exactly where you stand. Um, if you're able to buy now, or if not, what you need to do to prepare so that you're ready to buy in the future. You know, so that's exactly why we should meet. This is, there's no obligation to this. I want to just be of value to you and I want to give you some good information. Um, because I think just kind of breaking it down, like she obviously had some hesitations and some concerns. So to get her guard down, you got to just tell her like, Hey, look, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to close you. Like let's, that's exactly why we got to meet. Let's, let's see if this even makes sense. It's kind of like the reverse takeaway, right? Like, let's just get you the information you need. And then let's figure out, does it make sense now? Or what do you have to do to get prepared? All right. Yeah. And then, uh, and then when she started throwing the, uh, well, I got to check my schedule. Part of the reason why someone like starts saying, I got to check my schedule is they're politely telling you, like, you didn't give me enough value to make me right. want to meet with you. Right. So it's kind of like their nice way of kind of blowing you off. So I think if you would have like softened the blow a little bit more and kind of just got a little, you know, a little more heart to heart with her, then she probably would have just opened up her schedule a lot quicker. Um, or, or you could even, you could even use the tactic like, Hey, let's just book a tentative, a tentative appointment, right? Let's book a tentative. And then I can call you 
you know, earlier that day or I'll text you a couple hours before to make sure we're still good to meet. This way you can, you know, confirm what your schedule. Um, so let me, let's try that again. Manny, I want you to try that again. Connie, you're going to give them the same exact objection. But this time, Manny, I want you to like acknowledge, you know, slow it down a little bit and then let her know that's exactly why we need to meet and tell her why it's important that we meet and what, you know, what we're going to be able to help her discover. So let's go, Connie. Hey, Manny. Yeah, you know, um, I'm, I'd love to get into a house right now, but I'm really nervous. I have, uh, you know, a good amount of debt. I'm going through a divorce right now, but I make really good income. Got it, Connie. So uh, if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is that obviously you're nervous about this, but you definitely need to get into a home. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I definitely need to get into a home. I mean, like right now I'm, I'm renting, but you know, I really would prefer to own my property instead of rent, just rent is getting so high, right? Right, right. So um, would you be open to meeting with one of my loan people um, tomorrow or Friday um, to get a better idea as to what you're looking for in regards to... Uh, so, so Manny, let me stop you right there. Let me stop yeah. you right there. Manny, I want you to... I want you to empathize with her a little bit more about her situation. Okay. You, you kind of empathize like really quick and then you just went straight to the appointment, right? Like, so I want you to like, Hey, Connie, I totally hear you. You know, it sounds like you're, you know, you're going through some challenges right now, you know, and you're, you're unsure, you know, like, well, what's the right move. I totally hear you. You know, I've, I've worked with clients in the same exact situation. So I want you to reassure her that, Hey, I hear you. It's, I understand. I'm here to support you. Instead of like, all right, so I'm hearing you got to get into a home. All right, let's go ahead and book the appointment, right? Like, because you're going to, you're not going to build rapport with her that way. All right. So let's try that one more time. And this is good. Like, this is good for everybody, Manny, because there's a lot of us that do the same exact thing. We're trying to just get to the finish line. It's okay. almost like, uh, but you got to court her a little bit more, right? You got to court her. You got to butter her up a little bit more. You got to, let her know you care and stuff like that, and then go for the appointment. All right, well, let's try that one more time, Connie. Hey, Manny. Yeah, you know, um, I'd love to get into my my home right or get into a home right now, but I have a lot of debt, and uh, you know, but I make really good money. So, got it, got it. Um, oh, I totally understand, and I really, I, I don't even know where to go with this. To be honest with you, man, I'm already spun out. Just, just be real. Like, I mean, how would you, if, if it was your friend, Manny, if I was your friend, like Manny, you know, I'm just in a lot of debt right now, but I make good money. I want to buy a house. Like, what would you tell your friend? Like if I was, you're just, if you're just talking to your homie, your boy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, so, uh, Just tell me, like, just reassure me. Hey, I, I totally understand. Like, you know, a, a lot of people are in similar situations, you know, saying I totally understand and then just saying, backing it up with, hey, I, I've yeah. worked with other clients who are in similar situations, you know, and right. uh, you're not alone. Totally you know, this is exactly why we got to meet. So just start right there. I totally understand. And then explain how you've worked with other clients who are in similar situations. Okay, Connie. So I totally understand. And again, um, I've worked with a lot of other folks just like you that uh, felt the same way. Um, and uh, surely we got them to the point where they were able to buy them a house. But one of the key things is to put them in front of a loan person so that they can uh, get pre-qualified and have a better understanding of their finances. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of apprehensive to meet with a lender though, because uh, with all the debt and going through a divorce right now, I'm not, quite sure where my credit stands. And I'm worried that if we talk to a lender, you know, it'll affect my credit even further. I can totally understand that. Yeah, you might be nervous about that. But uh, I think we don't have to pull the credit right away. But the, the thing that we can do is have a discussion with them. And they'll let us know whether it's worthwhile. If it's, uh, if we can get to the point where we can qualify you, we'll pull credit. If we think we can't or there's an issue there we'll hold back and, uh, and would advise you otherwise all right now okay. go for the close go for the close so let's go ahead and book the consult. okay 
Sounds good. Okay. So if um, if that works for you, would tomorrow or Friday work for you to meet with them? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let me just check my calendar. Great. Connie, um, all right, Connie let them have the appointment now. Let them have the appointment now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a difficult person. Um, okay, well, maybe, maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, what time? Morning or afternoon? Uh, let's go with like early afternoon. Okay, All right, let's stop good. right there. Stop right there. Let's give it up for Manny. Give it up for Manny. That was a breakthrough right there. Connie, you're being so damn difficult too. Like, also for role play, like, be real, right? Like, if he answered your objection really good, like, got to give him the appointment too, right? Like, <laughs> you're being a little difficult, but you see the actually, difference, Manny. Actually, uh, yes, absolutely, and and. I appreciate you putting me on a spot like this because you know me, I, I have a hell of a time trying to do this um, in front of people, but, yeah. um, but thank you, you know, and thank you, Connie. I, it does, it's helpful. But do you guys, do you guys all see the difference in initially he was just trying to close for the appointment. And then when he actually just put his sales hat down and like totally reassured her about, you know, why we need to meet and the importance and all that stuff. And he even went off like he said, hey, when we meet, if, you know, we'll see if we need to pull your credit. If we don't have to, we won't pull your credit. Like that was all from you, Manny. Like you did all that, bro. Like you said all that. And that was really, really valuable. And that put her put her at ease. Uh, Jessica Zahar. Jessica, what, what do you got? Um, if someone's like being really. What is it, uh, how do I say it? Not difficult, but like scared. Mm -hmm. Would you say like, oh, this is no commitment, blah, 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 and then try to book the appointment so that it makes it less scary for them? I was like, oh, you're not really pulling credit. This is not really solid. It's just giving me information type of thing. I think when you do that, you still sound like a salesperson. I'd rather you just be a, a friend and reassure them. Hey, look, I totally understand. You might be nervous. Like, don't worry. Like, this is all part of the process. You know, uh, you know we're going to make sure you're informed. Cause like when you stick to like no commitment, that all sounds like sales lingo, right? And when someone's scared, they don't want to hear more sales. They want to hear reassurance, right? So I would go more of like, just be a person and just, mm -hmm. you know, heart to heart. Sahara, what do you got? Um, two things. So first, um, well, good job, Manny. Um, I noticed the first time when she's talked about the divorce on the first go around, you said fantastic right after, which was like, you know, and it's it's an auto response, right? Because we're just hearing things and we're like, great, fantastic. But I hear a lot of junior agents do that or just a lot of agents in general. They'll be like, cool, awesome, fantastic. But she just told you something like really sad, actually. So I think if everyone like, because I think that was a really important you moment know. is like, to show you're act actively listening and you're not just there to sell them something, it, it would be nice to be like, I'm so sorry that like, you know, you're going through that. I know that must be challenging, you know empathizing with them even a little bit more um i think that does really go a long way because i've had that situation happen as well and um when you can you know be a human to them it does it does go a long way and then second thing i think um part of like what jessica was asking if if you had just said like hey you know meeting with this lender is not going to we're not going to run your credit that was just like more of a simple answer to get to the point where that i think she kept harping on was like she didn't want to damage her credit more so you know, hey, this is just going to be informational. Like, I can't really advise you to get to your goal unless I, you know, we get these missing pieces of information. And it's really just going to be informational. So um, no credit checks, no anything like that, just a conversation, because I do want to help you because, you know, you sound like a really amazing person. I know you're in a tough time and I'm here to help, you know, try to make this transition easier. And then I would have just left it at that. Yeah. Good advice. See, just be I, human. Listen, I actually, do have a funny listen. story. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, who was that? Go ahead, Jessica. Sorry, I do have a funny story going back to Zahara saying that the whole divorce thing. So I was going through LP Mama and then um, what happened? Oh, I was like, oh, are you renting or are you, do you own a home? And then she goes, no, I live with my parents. I was like, okay, cool. And it's like, I didn't know how to rebuttal after, like not rebuttal, but like go back to my script. So then I was like, oh yeah, cool. You live with your parents. And it was just, I was like, I was so awkward at the moment. And then I also did another, uh -huh like uh like a laugh like an awkward laugh but then it just made it sound like I was laughing at them that they still live with their parents so I was like oh my god just trying to make a joke out of it yeah 
I hope they're not slumlords. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the rent's not too high, right? <laughs> uh, Thomas, what did you have to add? Yeah, I think I think uh, Manny did really well at the end. I would, like Zahara said, really tap into their emotions. I might have even added, of course, we're all thinking while you're talking is, hey, I know you're going through a lot right now. It might be even embarrassing to talk about this type of stuff, uh, you know, what you're going through. We're actually helping a lot of clients in the same situation, which Manny said. And then I would take it to, on this loan consultation, we're going to go through very general questions. You know, you, you can ask very general questions. That way we can figure out how to get you to your goal. Yeah. And I, I think the, the summary, guys, is, is empathy goes a long way, right? It goes a long way, just empathizing. Carla, what what you have? I think just to piggyback on Thomas, too, is that we're so focused on filler words. We're just so focused on, like, what's the right thing to say rather than just completely just listening. Because if you learn how to listen, it's easier for you to ask the right questions. We're so focused on getting a commission. We're so focused on closing it. We're so, clo we're so close to just getting on the higher side. But we tend to forget that they're human too. They're not dollars. Yeah. So if we, if we empathize on them a little bit more and we understand what they're going through, and if you understand what they're going through, it's easier for you to close them. Because yeah. they're already attached to you. They already gave you an information that's so personal that they don't want to share it with anybody else. So that's, yeah. a, that's actually a pro tip. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing is, is naturally, right? Like if, if you haven't studied sales a lot, naturally, you're going to always just try to go for the appointment. That's just human nature, right? So it's almost like you got to program yourself to stop and listen and listen with the intent of understanding, not with the intent of responding, right? Because sometimes we're just listening just so we can throw our response, right? And then you're not really listening. You're already thinking about what you're going to say next, instead of just like pausing and just like hear what they actually said. And then take a moment. Sometimes just taking a breath and taking a quick moment, it gives you a, that quick second to get your thoughts together, right? So don't think like you got to just fire off all these things. Because when you fire off, it, it takes you away from listening, right? Actively listening. All right, we got time for one or two more. Let's go. Who wants to be the agent? Jenny, you are the agent today. Who wants to be the client? Thomas, you are the client. Thomas Roscoe. Uh, so Jenny's calling you to follow up. See if you're still looking to buy a home. And Thomas, you're going to give her an objection. Okay. So throw the objection at her. Hi. Yep. Thanks for uh, calling me. I, I just wanted to let you know that I'm not really interested. I was just looking. And what sparked your interest initially to take a look at homes? Oh, you know, I just was uh, thinking about buying homes, but I've been seeing too much that are, it's pretty expensive around here. And what were you looking for uh, as a goal home? Uh, just something to fit my family. It's th I need at least three bedrooms. Three bedrooms and... Within what area were you in? Uh, around the San Jose area. We can travel at least probably 20 to 30 minutes away. Okay. There's always opportunities for everyone. Let's hop on a call with my financial advisor. They can definitely walk through other opportunities. There are programs that supports first-time home buyers. There are grants. There are other programs that would lower your interest rates. It's about strategies. And I can help you with searching with what's available to you. Will tomorrow at two or four work for you? Uh, tomorrow at two is good. Excellent. Okay. I'll pencil you in. Thanks. Bam, bam. Let's uh, stop right there. Give it up. Give it up for the, the try. All right. All right. I realized I didn't have any background information on him, so I had to ask yeah, what he was looking sure. for. And you're, you're just thrown on the spot right now. Who wants to, who noticed a big thing that, that maybe Jenny could have done to build a little more rapport? I probably noticed it. Maybe. I think she went for the kill all, all right away. When he mentioned, I was just looking. I think you should have dived into more like, why are you looking? Is it far from work? Is it far from your family? I think you forgot to empathize a little bit on his side. And you just, mm -hmm. okay, we'll just, here's our programs. And then that's it. Yeah. So you forgot to ask him about his big why 
or get to know a little bit better. And part of it was the repeat and approve as well, oh, yeah. right? Like he said, I'm just looking. And then you like, didn't even like acknowledge that he was just looking. Why were you looking? Right. All right. It was just like, he shoots, I shoot, you shoot, I shoot. Right. Like it was kind of like a bam, bam, bam. Um, which to build rapport, right. It was, it, it seemed very transactional, even though he gave you the appointment and Thomas made it kind of easy. Yeah. But you got to acknowledge what he said. So when he says, oh, I was just looking, repeat that back to him, right? Oh, okay, you were just looking. Hey, I totally understand. You might've just been browsing the website, you know, and then go for, well, what sparked your initial interest in, in looking, right? But that takes it from like, just sounding like a, like a salesperson to now like acknowledging and getting him to maybe open it up and connect with you a little bit more. So I want you to try that again. But this time I want you to slow down, right? Slow down. I want you to repeat, repeat and acknowledge and then ask him a little bit more questions about like why he was looking, what's important to him. And then actually listen to what he tells you and then feed off of that, right? So let's try that again, Thomas, same objection. Hi, Jenny. Uh, thanks for reaching out. Um, just want to let you know that I'm not really interested. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for calling though. You're just looking. You're just looking. yeah. I was just looking. Oh, I totally get that. You're just looking. The market does shift quite often. And curious, what sparked your interest initially to start to look around at home? Well, I'm currently renting, and I just want to get out of being a renter. And uh, you know, I've, I've been looking for a while, but homes are really expensive around here. Smart move, Thomas. Definitely looking to invest, looking for more stability. And how long have you been renting at your current place? About two years. Two years. And who's living with you right now? Uh, my roommate, my wife. Your roommate and your wife. Uh, she's. And then, so you. Oh, your your roommate and your wife. Yep. Slash same thing. Okay. And are you two looking uh, considering into like more space? Maybe uh, more. We would like to just have something near a good school, but usually anything around a good school is out of oh, our do you range. I see. Do you currently have any kids right now? Yeah, three. Three kids. And what grades are they in right now? Two, kindergarten, pre-K. Are they twins in kindergarten? No. They're about a year and a half apart. Oh, second grade. Yeah, second grade, kindergarten, and pre-K. Okay. Great. Is there a specific school zone you are particularly interested in? Uh, Berryessa is pretty good, but we're pretty open. If the school is like a eight or nine, even 10, then we'll be mm -hmm. interested. I know the market has definitely looked like it was really, really high. Sorry, I didn't acknowledge him. I'm sorry. Keep going, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. All right, now go, okay. in for, go in for a little bit more of the close now. Like, You've asked some questions, go on for a little bit more of the clothes now. Uh, you don't want me to like repeat, like try to acknowledge what he said about schools? No, that's fine. Just go now. <clears throat> okay, you heard him out. Now go into, you know, where are you guys at in the process, right? Okay. Have you guys met with anybody? Like I would figure out what his experience was, right? Like. Okay. Thomas, how many of you homes have you seen so far? Uh, I don't know, just a few. Went to a couple open houses, just to take a look inside. That was nice, about nice. Okay, you've seen a couple of homes. And have you spoke with any lenders about financing program? No, I just look at like online stuff, kind of the calculators and what I might be able to afford. Oh, really smart, doing your own calculation. This is great. Oh, I do recommend speaking with a lender. There's no obligation. They help you give more clarity in financial. Uh, this way, when you look at homes, you can feel more comfortable around the budget to work around. And then this way you can really narrow down home searching and opportunities. On top of that, there are other programs that we might not know of online that really supports you. For example, there are grants that supports first time home buyers. This way it supports you in achieving your goals in becoming a homeowner. There's opportunities for everyone as well. And I'm happy to hop on a quick call, bring my lender on. Um, it'll be a quick complimentary call, very educational for you and It'll be really quick and easy. Will tomorrow afternoon work for you? 
Yeah, sure. That that works fine. Great. I'll pencil you in for 2 p.m. Let's go. All right. Give it up. <laughs> a lot better. I know we walked you through this, but definitely a, a huge improvement from the first one to the second one, right? Like you didn't just go straight for the kill. Like you asked some more questions. You figured out, you know, a little bit more about what was important to him. And then at some point you got to just get to, well, Hey Thomas, you know, thanks for sharing all that, you know, all that information. It sounds like, you know, it, you may be a candidate, you know, for buying a home, but we got to get you some more information, you know, and then boom, this is where we can hop on a call and then all the stuff that you just said. Right. So what I want you guys to all take away is we don't, we don't have to go straight for the kill. In fact, going straight for the kill, then you take away from building rapport with the client, right? At the end of the day, if the client's on the phone with you, you want to like, you want to get to know them as much as possible so that they can put their guard down and they can actually feel like, all right, this is someone that I can see myself, you know, working with, or this is someone who's interested, right? So being a little more interested than interesting, right? Be more interested in what their whole story is all about. And that'll, that'll take your, make your conversations a lot better. Um, all right, guys, we're coming up on time now. It's 1230. Hope you guys got some value out of this today. Let's give one more round of applause for everyone who participated, everyone who contributed. Um, I like this session today where we just put people on the spot because I feel like we really, really made some progress today. So uh, I think we're going to keep doing, doing something like this similar next week. All right, you guys have a great day. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks. All right, Enrique.